I said on Wednesday that what I would do is I was going to, I'm not going to talk about the Easy Buy program, the particulars of the program. What I want to do is I want to talk about how to utilize the Easy Buy program as a sales tool. You know, in, let's face it, all of us in the room are salespeople. That's what we do, period, exclamation point. We are salespeople. And there's a, a lot of, there's service aspect to our business, but the bottom line is we have to go out and hunt to get our business. And, you know, I always look at it and I say, okay, if I'm going out hunting, and, and I'm not a hunter, by the way, so, um, but if I go out hunting and I see something that I want, I've got to make sure I get it in my, you know, get it in the scope so I can actually hit it, do whatever it's supposed to do. Well, in our business, one, hunting is when we get that prospect. Getting it in the scope means that I've got to use all my available tools and options to be able to bring that in. Well, I don't know about you, but I am convinced I cannot change your mind. It's not going to happen. We typically, we don't change anybody's mind. So that's my premise. When I started teaching sales, the first sales class I ever taught, I know most of you weren't even thought of back then, it was 1979. And one of the things I used to, I used to always say is that, you know, back, and it stays the same today, is that, you know, since we can't change somebody's mind, if that's the basic premise, then how do we move people from where they're thinking they're at to where we want them to be? And that is giving, and I know this, you're going to say, Greg, that's a play on words. It's really not. I am going to give them new information or they are going to develop new information so that they can make a new decision. So instead of changing Chris's mind, what we're going to do is we're going to say, Chris, okay, tell me about that situation, how you feel that way, what you've heard, everything else. And then through a series of questions, have you all of a sudden say, well, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. Well, based on that, I'm going to, I think I could do that. So anyway, new information can potentially develop a new decision. That's our basic premise. Now, how do people formulate where they, what they feel about today? Well, one is their experiences of the past. Now, here's the interesting thing about their experiences of the past. Some of those experiences are subconscious. They had the experience. They don't necessarily recall it, but they had the experience. They've also had an experience they very clearly remember. So as a result, those experiences, both conscious and subconscious, formulate their opinion on what they, are, they want to do whatever that is, or how they feel about anything. And then there's one other thing, and it's daily influences, weekly influences, monthly influences. Question for you. How many in the room, please raise your hand, watched news at least once over the last two weeks? Any kind of news. So some of you did not watch any news. God bless you. I haven't watched news. It'll be almost two years. I hate the news because it's always negative. But one of the things that's going on with news, people, most people do catch news, whether they listen to it on radio, whether they watch it on TV, whatever it happens to be, they, through Facebook, through Instagram, they catch pieces of news. Well, how many newscasters are speaking very good about real estate and interest rates right now? How many? Zero. None. What are they saying? They're given this garbage line that says interest rates are up because interest rates are up. You can't afford to buy a house and maybe you should wait till interest rates come down. Maybe you should wait till home prices come down. I'm thinking, you news people, you're idiots. But really, they're not idiots. What they're doing is they're selling advertising. And the way you sell advertising is by creating drama. So they create drama in the marketplace, which influences the very people you and I are trying to serve as clients. That's what happens. That's the premise of where we're gonna, what we're gonna talk about today. So 
We go into it, people formulate their, their own opinions on everything that they're going to do based on their conscious and subconscious experiences of the past, based on the bombarding of what's going on in the marketplace today from news and everybody else, their friends, their family, blah, 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 and they formulate an opinion. And we need them to use us, not the agent next door, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, you've got all the, you, you've been through, Mike does tons and tons of sales training and you go through all that. What I want to talk about now is how can you use, put one more arrow in the quiver to help you secure that client. And Easy Buy gives you a tool to do that that no one else in the marketplace has. Closest thing they have is a ribbon or knock, which is not exactly the same thing. And a lot of people are a little bit leery about ribbon and knock agents because now agents are finding out that ribbon and knock will actually sell their data. Easy Buy is exclusive to you. Only you. Century 21 Connect, that's it. Not Century 21 results, not Century 21 achievement, just Century 21 Connect. It's yours, the Easy Buy program. So you have something other people don't have. That's number one. Now, if you tell that to a client, in many cases, it's going to put up a defense barrier. So instead of listening, they're saying, oh, I'm trying to be sold. Greg is trying to sell me on this. No, 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 no. So I'm not going to try to sell him anything. What we're going to try to do is introduce it through a series of questions. That's how I believe the best sales people do their business, is through a series of questions. So I like to ask, in my business, I do it all the time. I don't have anything that's quote unquote special that every other loan officer in the field doesn't have. But I know this, most loan officers, they don't introduce things. They just, you know, they got one thing in mind, transaction, lowest rates, lowest closing costs, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to, no, that doesn't, that doesn't work. So through a series of questions, we can go ahead and introduce and hopefully get them off of their premise, their experiences of the past, the bombarding of news and friends, and have them make a new decision. So. So we've got easy buy. So as I looked at this, I wrote down questions that you could use to be able to help your buyer understand, hopefully, that maybe they should take this action. Can't tell them, but you can ask them. So one of the things that I can ask people, and you, I, most of you already do this, when somebody starts the, starts the process, they're a buyer now, not a seller. They start the process. You probably ask them, have you been pre-approved or pre-qualified? You probably ask them that question. Most of you, not in your heads, you do. Okay, perfect. They need to do that. I usually ask them, I said, just out of curiosity, why did you already start that process? And, you know, and it makes them start thinking about why did they do that if they started doing it. If they didn't start doing it, Jeff, they say, no, I haven't been pre-approved. I said, out of curiosity, any reason why not? So it doesn't make any difference what they say. My question is, why'd you do it or why not? Whatever the answer is, all I want them to do is to begin to think about the decision that they made and why they made the decision that they did. That's it. It doesn't really make any difference. So now my next question is, do you think the market has the potential to still be competitive when the time comes for you to make an offer. Do you still think that there's the potential for the market to be competitive when the time comes for you to make an offer? Now, what is the obvious question, answer to that? Is it possible? Yes. But they might say no. It doesn't make any difference if they say yes or if they say no. All you're at, trying to do is understand where they're at. Most people are going to say, well, yes, it's still possible. And then I'll agree with them. At that point, I give them an agreement. You know, it is possible. Thankfully, it's not the same as it was six months ago. So maybe it won't be quite as competitive. But yes, if we find the right house, you're exactly right. There's still people putting in a lot of offers. So now... 
you've kind of got on their side of the table with them because you haven't disagreed with them on anything. You've simply asked them questions, understood where they're at. Now, next question. You mentioned that you have, you've already been pre-qualified, pre-approved. How did you select the lender that you were going to use? And they'll give you a, you know, whatever the answer is. Well, it's my brother's sister's best friend. Or, you know, I really like Rocket Mortgage because I've used them before. Or whatever it happens to be. It doesn't really make any difference. What you're looking for is how did they arrive at that decision and what is the tie to that individual or that company? What is it? All right? Okay, now, next question is, if we get into a highly, highly competitive situation, have you thought about things that you'd be willing to do to help make your offer better than anyone else's? Some people are gonna say, well, I guess maybe I thought about it. Other people are gonna say, no, that's what I'm using you for. Help me find that answer. But whatever the case is, if they say, yes, I've thought about it, well then, my next obvious question, what are the tools that you might suggest that we would use to help your offer become the very best offer? And sometimes you'll have somebody that actually says, well, I've got a pre-approval letter that says I don't need, I'm good to go. At that point, I ask another question. And I say, do you think anybody else submitting an offer would be submitting a pre-approval letter? And they say, well, I would guess everybody did. So what makes yours stronger than theirs without disclosing confidential information? And the answer to that is what? Nothing. So they think their pre-approval letter gives them a step up, and really their pre-approval letter doesn't do a thing. It's the lowest common denominator. I have to do that. Okay, so what other strategies? Well, I'm not going to put in an offer that's going to go much above list price. I don't want to get into a bidding war. Thankfully, I don't want you to get into a bidding war. Good gosh, I'm kind of hoping that those days are behind us, although they are, there's still some out there. But if you and I want to stay away from a bidding war, I agree. Back to my question, what are tools that you and I can use that from your perspective that would you know, help, uh, help your offer, our offer, be the strongest one the seller looks at? You know, in a case, finally you're going to get to the point, well, I'm not exactly sure. I'm hoping you might have an idea. Okay, there are strategies out there that we use to help make your offer the best offer that's out there. I want to ask you a question. What do you think? would happen if you could go in and had all the cash sitting in your bank account and just write an all-cash offer? What do you think? And they say, well, obviously, well, an all-cash offer is going to be stronger than somebody that's getting financing. Well, I tend to agree with you on that, by the way. So what am I doing? I'm agreeing again. I'm getting on their side of the table. We're not adversaries. We're just moving them along. And I agree. So now, if, if an all-cash offer, if it's all sitting in the bank, you and I don't have that extra 400000 at least I don't, extra 400000 sitting in the bank that I can just write a check with. But what if there were a way to get that 400000 for your offer? Oh, how do you do that? Well, before we do that, let me ask you another question. If the seller has four offers in front of them, and all four offers are pretty strong. They've got pre-approval letters. They've got, um, they're putting down 10% or more. Um, they've got, you know, the, 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 the buyer's agent is selling the agent on how strong their buyer is. You got all of that. So you've got four offers. Three of them have pre-approval letters. One of them is cash. From the seller's perspective, what do you think the seller's thinking? Go ahead. What do you think the seller's thinking? Four offers, three with financing and appraisal contingencies, one all cash, no contingencies. Take the cash. Take the cash. Of course. That's the obvious answer. So now, 
I can't tell you this, but there are enough people who have said that an all-cash offer doesn't always have to pay the same amount as a financed offer. I can't say that that's always the case, but an all-cash offer is pretty strong. And the seller's less likely to just get up and walk away with your offer if they know that there's no appraisal and financing contingency. How do you feel about that? And again, what you'll probably get is that they are going to say, well, that obviously would be strong, but then they're going to come back to you with exactly what you're waiting for. How do we do that? Well, at our company, we have a program called Easy Buy. That Easy Buy program is nothing more than an option. You may not ever have to use it. I hope you don't have to use it. But in the event we get into a highly competitive situation, if we know that going in, we could potentially go in with an all cash offer. And I know you're, I know you're thinking, well, that's, well, where's that money going to come from? Somebody's got to pay for it. Yes, there's a cost associated with it, but we'll talk about the cost. It's probably a little bit less than what you think, but whatever the case is. So I don't know that we're going to need that program. And quite frankly, I hope you don't need that program. But if you do, would you want to have it available? What's the obvious answer? I mean, probably eight out of 10 people are going to say, absolutely, what do I have to do? Well, all you really have to do is just say, yes, I think I might want this to be available. And this, now there is one, there's, there's, there's a big catch to it. I mean, you want to get your financing and your everything from your brother who's in the mortgage business, and that's perfect. Let's hope we're going to do business with him. But if you're going to do business with Easy Buy, Easy Buy will only do business with a lender that our company knows and trusts that's been working with us for four years. So now you don't have to use him. You do not. You got to use him if you use Easy Buy, which means you've already been pre-approved. Let's get pre-approved one more time. It doesn't cost you anything. It's easy. It's simple. I know him. Process is very easy. And if you don't need Easy Buy, you're going to use your brother. That's okay. But what's more important to you, using your brother or getting the house? If you have to get the house, and the only way to get the house is with cash, this becomes nothing more than an option. How do you feel about that? Now, that's a relatively long presentation. You can shorten it up however you feel you need to. But you know when you've got a client that is going to be a little bit more difficult because they're not only checking with you, but they're checking with one or two other buyer's agents and you want them in your, you want them to come to you. And if that's the case, then you've got to pull out all the stops. And easy buy becomes one of those stops. I'm going to present something absolutely no one else is going to talk to you about. And you don't even have to use it. It's just a tool. All right. Before I go on, a couple more things, questions, anything. What's the charge? The charge on this, what do you think a charge to have someone give us an all cash? How much you think it might be? Just curious. 1%. Well, it pegged it perfectly, 1%. And how did they come up with 1%? Well, they came up with 1%, obviously, because that's what their books say they have to make. But here's really what, what they look at. They look at the marketplace and say, an all-cash offer versus a financing offer is valued at how much. And that value could be as high as 2 to 2.5%. Two but they don't need that on the books. And most people aren't going to be willing to do that. So they just go with 1%. And what you're going to find is that in many cases, not all, but in many cases, that 1% is made back up because you probably won't pay exactly the same amount for the house if, unless you had to do uh, compared to financing. Does that answer your question? Sure. So the presentation of all this becomes critically important. Now, this is nothing new. When Easy Sell came out, and I mentioned this on, 
um, on Wednesday, when Easy Sell came out, many of you started using, you know, the Easy Sell pitch lines that all of you were putting together, uh, you know, to help secure a listing. I mean, how easy was it? I mean, you know, look, I can't say that you're going to, you know, you're going to give you an all cash offer you're going to like, but if it didn't cost you anything to get, you know, to have 11 different people look at it and say that how much they'd give you in cash, would you be interested? Well, a ton of sellers said yes. To the tune of just over $20 million in production, actual loans closed through Easy Sell, but that doesn't include, the, in my opinion, 20, 40, maybe even 60 million in production that closed as a result of that presentation that never got, didn't have to use Easy Sell. But the presentation of that won the client, and that's what Easy Buy does, gives you the chance to bring that client in your house for you. Now, for those of you who want to take that just one step further and say, gosh, you know, that would be great, but Greg, I'd like you to get the business because I know you, I trust, I know you, the way you're going to communicate, that's very important to me, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to say that to them, but this is a way to get me introduced to them and then from there it's up to me to try to hopefully win their trust and win their business. Make sense? I hope this helps. Thank you.